Welcome to the Tech Simple podcast. Independent insights into the latest AV technologies, as well as tips and best practices to optimize AV solutions for modern workplace and learning environments. Here are your hosts, David and Jonathan from Connectus AV Consulting. Great to be speaking with you again, David. Hey, Jonathan. Yes, great to be here for another episode of the podcast. Today, we're going to be tackling one that we hear about all the time, and that's about technology improving the video conferencing experience. Um, And when we say improving the video conference experience, what we're really talking about is not so much the in-room experience, but the experience for the people on the other end of the call and improving the ability for those people to follow the conversation, what's going on in the actual meeting room. And we're actually going to go through sort of a hierarchy of needs of a video conferencing call and, you know, kind of the key elements that have developed over time. So where would you like to start? Maybe at the bottom of the hierarchy or the top? I think we should always start at the top and that is is audio. But I do want to just emphasize how important that statement we should almost repeat that statement which you just said just so it's nice and crystal clear for those people listening what it's all about is not the people in the room it's about those people and this has all been driven by hybrid working and hybrid learning which has been accelerated by the global pandemic you know it's 2023 at the moment this is all about enabling those people outside of the room, whether they're joining from home or some other remote location, to be able to follow the conversation and feel included in what's going on in that room. So how can we make that happen? All right, audio, getting back to what you were saying, Jonathan, that's the first one. And that's the critical one. I mean, if we turn video off just for a minute, audio is critical. We can't have communication at all unless we have audio. We need to be able to speak to each other and hear each other clearly. So Jonathan, you've got plenty of experience in in what we've been seeing in the last couple of years in terms of technology advancements. What have you been seeing? Well, we've come so far, there really is no excuse anymore to have poor audio in a space. You know, we started off, you know, if if I cast my memory back to years and years gone past, you know, you used to have to have a microphone for every single person sticking out of the table. And it was a nightmare, a million cables and architects hated it. But if I fast forward to where we are today, we have some very sophisticated microphones. And in fact, the microphones that you see these days are made up of, you know, 10, 20 or even 100 individual microphones that all track and do these things called beamforming to focus on individual people. Um, And they come in different varieties, of course. Uh, You know, one that most people would be familiar with is the Shure ceiling microphone, but there's also table microphone versions. Uh, There's also wall-mounted, like, conferencing bar types. And even products now are are becoming plug-and-play. They're almost like USB devices that you plug in, uh, ready to go, don't need complicated configuration by an expert. So... The quality of these microphones is is fantastic and there's really no excuse anymore actually to have poor audio in a space. So that's a given. Top priority is the audio. So let's move on to video though because I I think there's been even more uh, advancements in in video. Um, Specifically, I'm talking about uh, the people on camera. So you cast your mind back to say 2019 and we had that typical situation of video conferencing meant there was a camera capturing a room full of people. And if you were on the other end of the call, whether you were in another room or, you know, at your home office or whatever, you were just seeing this room and you weren't seeing the faces clearly. You were just seeing that there were people in the room. And if you didn't know those people, even with good audio, you could hear what was going on. You could hear the conversations, but you couldn't follow the conversation. But now, um, so much has changed with cameras. Talk to us about that, Jonathan. Yeah, you couldn't follow the conversation and you were spending all your time 
actually trying to figure out who was talking and what was going on and you weren't actually involved in the session you weren't actually contributing or taking in the information so manufacturers said okay well how can we how can we solve this you know because no one's panning and tilting and zooming in the camera by themselves so that first development and and this was kind of a big development by a company called Hudley was automatically framing all of the people in the room so instead of you had a big wide out shot if there was you know a couple of people it would zoom in automatically and and frame around them and that worked really well actually when you had two three four people but when you went into the the larger rooms you were back to square one anyway it was framing everyone you know the 10 people in the room and all you could see was the whole room and they were tiny little heads again so we're back to square one and now, um, you know, something I've been super impressed with has been the way you can almost emulate uh, what's happening on a laptop. So if I'm sitting at home and you know, I've got my laptop in front of me and, and my camera, my webcam is uh, capturing a, a picture of me, it's got a nice uh, zoomed in image of me, you can see all my facial expressions. Now it seems we can emulate that same thing in a meeting room. You know, we've got cameras that um, can almost zoom and crop in different people around that meeting room table or in a classroom, wherever, uh, and just, I suppose, really helps to break down that barrier and allow people to follow the conversations. What are some examples of, of products or manufacturers that are at the forefront there? Yeah, so th there's some really powerful ones coming out. Uh, Logitech is especially good at this at the moment and neat. And I, I want to make a distinction here between the cameras we're talking about now and the ones that track just the speaker. There was a bit of a, a stepping stone between what I just talked about with the Hardly and where we are today. And that was those cameras that you might have had multiple and it would just zoom in onto one person talking. But they were very slow. And for the people on the other end of the call, you could only just see one person. You couldn't really see what was going on in the room. Um, it was switching very slowly between people so you know as people would talk backwards and forwards it was hard to follow them but you know fast forward to today and what we're just talking about with the logitech and neat cameras is well it takes a picture of the whole room um, but rather than just seeing that whole picture it zooms into each individual person's face so it's almost as you say like the zoom gallery um, but from a meeting room or a classroom you're seeing each individual person's face zoomed in and they're even as smart now to have, you know, a camera in the center of the table plus the camera at the front. And if you're talking across the room to someone, it uses the camera in the center. So you're looking face on and if you move back to the screen to see the content, it changes the camera. So they're really quite dynamic and smart. And this has been driven via uh, AI technology and machine learning. So they're not quite there yet, but they're definitely getting there to, to really level the playing field and make that experience for the remote participant uh, easy to follow what's going on. Yeah, that's definitely um, coming along super fast, isn't it? I mean, I would think, as I say, we're in 2023. I would think um, it won't be long before we're, we're seeing uh, those types of products coming out by uh, multiple manufacturers and becoming a lot more commonplace. So if you're listening, definitely look out for those types of products, that type of technology, which can you know, really make a difference to following those conversations for remote users. Now, the last one, Jonathan, collaboration. Uh, so, you know, we're talking about the content that might be shared on a call, the chat, which is also important as part of engagement, raising of hands in calls. There's, there's quite a bit going on these days as for that rich collaboration piece. It is the third one behind audio and video. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, but this, this hasn't been cracked yet. Um, Dave, we're, we're we're far behind. You know, audio is cracked, um, and you know, it's providing a great solution. Video is well on the way in terms of cameras. We're almost there of providing a fantastic solution, but collaboration, we we haven't quite got there with this one yet. And it's probably because, as you say, it's the lowest on the requirement of needs to have a good um, collaboration or a discussion session. So the focus hasn't been here yet, but there is some development. Uh, Microsoft recently released their signature Teams rooms with their front row experience. And this kind of puts chat and hand raising uh, really visible to all of the people. Uh, but it comes with some compromises around the size of sharing and content. So we're not quite there with this one yet. But 
as we move forward, I think we'll be seeing focus in delivering more collaboration components in the next two years once we crack the, the camera situation. Yeah, I've just got one comment at the moment in, in that space, and that is more information, the more stuff you put on a screen in, inside a room especially, but um, even worse on, on small laptops. You know, you've got all the people's faces on the call and you've got the chat and then you've got content being shared and then you've got hand raises. The more stuff you get, the more busy it gets and the more, um, not so much confusing, but just distracting it all becomes. Uh, so you don't want to go too far in the wrong direction. And one last point I would make is it is still very important for those people inside a room to be able to see the content at the right size. So, you know, we can't have other things on the screen, which is then squeezing the content into a smaller window or a smaller rectangle where people maybe at the back of the room can no longer see or read as effectively as they should be. So just something to keep in mind with uh, with these things in, in video conferencing. If you do need to size your screen a little bit larger than um, previous years. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Tech Simple Podcast. For like, share or discover more episodes, head over to Spotify. If you'd like to talk to us about AV in your workplace or learning environment, book an initial discovery call with David or Jonathan at connectus.com.au. And remember, 